This is the tuna can. Does it taste like fish? Well, you tell me. Yeah, we, we should taste it. <laughs> tuna. And very, very, very tasty. <laughs> if you think about it, to replace an animal from the ocean with plants from the ocean because they bring the natural ocean flavor. Right? Yes, so yes. We do have salmon. Yeah. Uh, this morning I actually brought just to showcase vegan oysters. I have the CEO and founder of Better fish. My name is Dennis and it means the sea in Turkish. The ocean is actually the most underfunded SDG. So only 1% in climate investment go into the ocean. Being able to wake up every morning and saying I'm doing something positive for this beautiful planet is just the best feeling ever. Yeah. You're listening to Bite Size Climate Tech, season three. This is the tuna can, better fish tuna. It's plant-based tuna made from seaweed. I have the CEO and founder of Better Fish. My name is Dennis, and it means the sea in Turkish. She's going to tell me about their process, or how do you make this? So we use uh, European seaweed, different species, uh, out of 10,000 of different seaweed species. And you can think about it, how to turn something from a cocoa bean into the chocolate bar that we all love and want to eat on a daily basis. So basically, we take the seaweed and we look on uh, if we need to dry it, if we need to roast it, if we need to blanch it. Um, and in the end, we have a powder that we can then use and turn into seaweed, just like the cocoa powder you would know from, from baking your favorite chocolate cake. Well, how long does it take? for you to do this process? Uh, we worked on it for over two years because we had to build the whole supply chain in Europe for seaweed uh, in, like, as a raw material. So nobody has looked into it, like what do you actually need to do with seaweed? You know, usually seaweed is dried, yeah. taken out of the ocean, it's dried and that's it. But there's so much more that you can do to bring out certain flavor profiles, nutritional profiles and turn it into something exciting. And take it step by step. You take a seaweed outside of the ocean, yeah. dry it, and some people they usually stop there and exactly. you what you do is you take those dry seaweed and then what happens um, and then we bring samples to our large kitchen basically it's not necessarily a lab but it's a large kitchen and we experiment we basically take it apart and we like you would cook with uh, normal other ingredients we we look how it turns out you know how does it taste after a certain process like blanching for example does it change color you know does it taste texture and uh, then it, we apply a different process so in the end we have a chain of different processes and in the end, it's something you wouldn't recognize as seaweed anymore. Does it taste like fish, actually? Well, you tell me. Yeah, we, we should taste it. If you think about it, to replace an animal from the ocean with plants from the ocean because they bring the natural ocean flavor, right? Yes, so, yes. Yeah. It's the umami taste, I think. Yes. You were telling me that different species of seaweed, you make it into different things. So yeah. other than this, because you're called better fish, is there any other fish like salmon and stuff you're doing? We do have salmon. Yeah. Uh, this morning I actually brought just to showcase vegan oysters. Oysters? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have them anymore. They're all gone. I mean, we, we don't bring them to market, but it's just to show people what can be done with seaweed. And uh, but there's also seaweed that tastes like truffle or like lemon. Yes, yes. So there's uh, like all these flavors that we know from land, they also exist in the ocean. How long it takes from the dry seaweed to this? Um, in time, you mean? Uh, this can be fast, but you know, developing the process takes a long time. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. But uh, the, the, the process itself it can be very fast. Okay. How would you explain this to an eight year old? Basically, uh, like the cocoa bean, you know, you would, would take the cocoa bean, you would peel it, um, you would dry it, you would ferment it, um, then you would probably roast it in some cases, maybe not, or you would extract parts of it. So you actually get just the concentrated chocolate flavor, we get the concentrated truffle flavor or fish flavor or what we want. Uh, and then we use it into baking, basically. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the future that we can all get this uh, in the supermarket. The next segment is you're going to answer a question from a previous mm -hmm. guest. The previous two guests, actually, yeah. they're the founders of Cosmic Aerospace. Yeah. So if there's um, one thing that you could change in your company, what would it be? Bring in more people because uh, there should be more people working on this amazing topic and also specifically more men. We are almost om only female uh, oh, people right. in my company. That's female. very rare. Yeah, That's people have founded female scientists, and female business developers, uh, and we want to have male men on the team. Great. Mm -hmm. um, and the second question is how, how do you. How you got to this uh, conference and, and what kind of impact it has? And then 
what would be a better way to do that? So unfortunately, I didn't come here by bike. This would be my preference. I love biking. I go like in Berlin, I go everywhere by bike. Yeah. But at some point, I would really love to be able to even, you know, ride distances like this in a in positive, impactful way. So that's what I want to change in the future. Great. Can you leave a question for the next guest? What would you do at a conference like this to maybe generate energy uh, instead of spending energy? Why did you decide to work in climate? Because we have to and it's fun and it's exciting and being able to wake up every morning and saying I'm doing something positive for this beautiful planet is just the best feeling ever. The ocean is actually the most underfunded SDG like SDG oh, really? 14. Okay. It's the most underfunded SDG there is that only 1% in climate investment go into the ocean and you know I need to save the oceans. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Let's, Let's make, make climate, climate cool, cool again. again. Bye bye. Nice.